How's it going, guys? So, you may know, but sometimes when you're making 3D scenes that be environments or cities or whatever, it's very easy to eventually get to the point where your viewport is completely bogged out, lagged, and you just have tons of models and you can't work anymore because your computer can't handle the amount of geometry you are dealing with, with all the duplicates and builds and all of that craziness. But almost every single 3D software has a solution to this problem and it's called instances. And if you've been, if you're new to Blender, this is something you have to know. Every user of 3D software is something you need to be able to utilize this. And once you understand it, you'll be using it constantly. So what are instances? How do you use them? Now, before we get into the definitions, I want to take just a quick second, let you guys know that my spring sale is happening right now till the end of the month. So if you've been wanting to get real-time materials, now it's time to get it, 25% off. If you don't know about real-time materials, it is an add-on with currently 290 procedural materials you can apply to anything in one click. Tons of really cool categories like carbon fiber, exterior materials, leather, brick, a lot of really cool things like that. Also, you can get my animation course. We'll bring you step-by-step -step how to make really cool looping animations for all different types of environments. And my shading course, if you really want to understand making procedural materials from the bottom level, that's a great course. All of that with the code D3SPRING. Hit the link in my bio if you want to check that out. Now, let's get into these definitions. So I'm just going to throw kind of a direct definition at you. Instances are copies of an object or group of objects in a 3D software that share the same properties as the original. Think of it as a duplicate or a clone of the original object. So I like to think of it as like ghosts of an object. So say you're building a scene and uh, I'm just going to use some rudimentary shapes here and you just take one shape and you duplicate it say 10 times and it's got four faces. Well, now you have four times 10, which is 40. You can have 40 faces and that's if you're not using instances. Now, let's do that again, but take that same object and duplicate it 10 times, but using instancing. Now the computer can only see four faces. Now you can kind of see with your eye that there's a lot more faces, obviously, but when you used instances, it's telling the computer, just keep duplicating this one object, only use the data of this object. And here's why it's really useful and beneficial. So lots of faces uses VRAM. So using instances is an efficient use of resources. Instead of creating multiple copies of an object, you can use instances to reference the same object that saves you memory and processing power. Now, this next benefit can be a benefit, or if you're not aware of it, it can be kind of a curse. And that is really, really easy editing. So you have that one object with all of its ghosts and clones and stuff. And if you take it and you make an edit to the geometry, it's going to do that to all of them at the same exact time. So if you're, if you're duplicating something that you know you're going to want to have different duplicates of, you can just edit that one object rather than if you're doing real duplicates, not instance duplicates, you have to make that edit to each individual one. So this is also going to just, in a big way, save you time. Now, on that note about easy editing and one edit edits, all of them, you can also do really easy variations with this, meaning all of them share the same data of the original. But if you take an instance and say throw a modifier on it, on an instance, it's only going to throw that modifier on that one instance. So you can make little changes to random instances within your scene that won't affect the original geometry. So it kind of works vice versa. It has, it certainly has its limitations, but if you need small variations that be uh, material or, you know, a modifier modification, things like that, you can do that to your little instances around and make it easy to make uh, modifications to specific ones. So there you go, that's instancing. And if, you, if you've been building environments or say forests or cities or stuff, you can probably imagine how beneficial this is. But let's take it one step further before we get into practical application. And that's gonna be called nested instancing. So let me go ahead and I'll throw another definition at you so that we really fully understand it. Nested instancing is a technique used in 3D modeling where multiple instances of objects are used to create a larger, more complex object. It involves an instance of an object and then creating another instance of that object instance within the original instance, creating a nested hierarchy. This can be used to create more detailed and intricate objects without having to create each individual element separately. Now, here's a graph that I created to kind of help you visualize this. Now, this is great for two reasons, because one, you can just edit a bunch of things at once, but two, it's easy on your computer and you can use instances to create a larger object. Now, if the graph didn't make any sense, just the simple concept is you can use different sets of instances on some geometry to create a bigger shape. And it's a much more optimized way of modeling if you can do it. It doesn't always work that way. Now, 
let's get into practical application. All right, practical examples. I have three. So this this first one is one that if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know what I'm going to talk about here. And this is really a good way to answer a question I get a lot of times, which is why aren't you using an array? So here I have this scene and um, you can see I have my instance groups right here. So if, say if I wanted to uh, pull up my group, go to my instance loop, this is the group. And the group stems from this right here, this section, these models right here, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And so say, hey, I wanted to create a loop where all these objects are going down the line. It would make sense why you would say, we'll use an array, use an array modifier. The thing is, the array modifier creates real geometry. And so what I wanted to do here is create a scene so that my camera can go through it and it makes a seamless loop. So it's just going through that one scene and the rest of the duplicates are just meant to really create the illusion that it's infinite. Um, again, you could use an array, but instead here's what I did. So let's go ahead and just delete all of these instances. And here's the original scene, it's five by five. So what I did was I used a uh, plane to kind of create my scene and then I highlighted them all. I hit M new collection and I labeled it loop. Now all I have to do to keep the scene not only loopable, but easy for my computer to process is just simply create that shift a collection instance select loop. And now I just hit shift. Now I just hit alt D alt D keeping it on the grid. And not only is it really editable. So check this out. If I take this guy and I move it, it moves it on all of them, right? Moves it on all of them. But then you can say, hey, I want to create some variation. So you'll take this guy and maybe throw something on it to create that loop. But see, but notice how we're not creating new real geometry, but we're also able to have this flexibility and flexibility and this control. And you can add new objects to the scene, of course, making this really nice and easy to work with. The next example is very practical for most 3D artists. I think you'll eventually get to the point where you're creating some kind of scene or some kind of environment. So here I took a plane and I just displaced the plane and uh, geometry nodes uses instancing quite heavily. Um, if you've been watching a lot of my uh, geometry nodes tutorials, you'll know this instance on points node is used so much and that's because it's really one of the pillars of geometry nodes. One of, not all of. Um, so what I did was I created a distribute points on faces. And here we, so I'll just show you that here. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna randomly apply a net of points on top of some geometry that you have input to it. In this case, I took it, took something and I threw a displace modifier on it. Then put a dis, hey, give me a minute, I'm recording a video. You what? Uh, give me a minute, I'm, I'm almost done recording my video. I bet, I'm on my own. Uh. So I then took a instance on points node, which is going to say, hey, all those points, let's take this node and have it give it the ability to put something on that. So what I did was I created my particle, which is this guy right over here, which represents say a tree or a building or birds, whatever you're trying to duplicate a lot of. And then I'm just gonna drag that into the scene here. So we have our real geometry, our real physical geometry that we're gonna put geometry into instance. So now it's gonna say, Take this geometry and now instance it on all of those points that we randomly created and you can use a seed value to distribute them. So people have been using this a lot since geometry nodes came out as a very easy scene creation method. It's really, really awesome. And you know, this is a very rudimentary example to show you how we're using instancing within Blender. All right, one more example. Now, another way that I really love to use it is, in, uh, is when using lights. So here are the lights is in using light. So I'm just gonna delete this guy here and we're gonna to go to the render view and check this out. So we have a, point, a spotlight right here hitting it. And for example, say I wanted to create another spotlight, but I definitely know that I want that spotlight to do the same exact thing as this one right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Alt D instead of Shift D and then I'm gonna bring it to this side and then rotate it. Now, even though a light isn't geometry. I'm not making a ghost of any geometry, but I am making a ghost of the data that applies to this light. So now if I just give it a strength of zero, they're both going to turn off. If I bring it back to 10,000, they're both going to turn on, make it blue, make it orange, make it red. So if you know that you want both of those, both of those lights to be the exact same way, 
my air conditioner turned on. Hopefully, hopefully that's not too loud. Um, if you know that you want them both to be the exact same way, then why not do that? I've, I've created several hallways where there's like eight lights on this side of the hallway and eight lights on that side of the hallway. And I know they all, I all want them to be the same and say they're at a strength of 500. Now I need to make them, bring them to strength of a thousand. Well, I just click the original one, change it to a thousand. They're all now a thousand. So that is instancing. That's the whole game. That's the whole thing. Um, I hope that this really clarified some things for you. If you've been dealing with bogged out scenes, this is great. Now, eventually, once you have enough instances, it will start to bog down your scene, but not even close to if you're using real geometry. So I hope this helps you. Um, it's always great to kind of have a refresher on these definitions, and it was really great for me to, when I was researching this. So thank you for watching. Hope you learned some stuff. Don't forget about my spring sale. If you want to check out those products, D3 Spring at checkout, you can get 25% off. Uh, but with that being said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.